Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I have for you is episode 7 of my Football Manager 23 save with FC Eindhoven. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could check it 25 likes on today's episode, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 700 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Drop a comment in down in the comment section down below to help boost the video in the YouTube algorithm. Let me know down in the comments which one of the signings that I have made is your favourite. There has actually been some movement this window. It's been really tricky. We've missed out on a lot of our preferred targets, but we've got some players in through the door. We've got probably some of your favourites as well out the door as well. We had to because we needed the money and we've got some offers which I think are all acceptable. Now, if you're wondering where the photo is, that's normally behind me here. I'm currently watching the uh, Italy versus England game. It's currently the 52nd minute. We're winning 2 now. But if I have that up there, then it'll be reflecting in the reflection of the picture and then the video is going to get taken down so to prevent that from happening there's going to be a, a little bit of a plain background behind me but it's just directly behind my head you shouldn't really see it anyway if the colors start changing around me as well it's because something there's some sort of transition on the screen i'm not missing the england game who doesn't want to watch gareth southgate ball if we start out then with our player departures, Martin Pienenberg has been sold for one reason, well, two reasons really. He was out of contract this summer and I didn't really want to give him a new deal. Three star current ability. I never really thought he was going to be good enough to make that step up and I also never really knew how to pronounce his second name. So we managed to get an £8,000 fee for him, which I think is fairly decent. He's gone back to the second division uh, in Holland as well. So he's dropped down to actually the team who we lost. Our last two games, we lost and drew. We lost to Hellman, who were like second bottom and then we drew to John PSV. So that certainly wasn't ideal. We also saw the departure of Jasper Dalhouse. Again, another player who I didn't really know how to pronounce his name. He featured quite a lot when we changed to our 3-4-3 system, but we got £475,000 up front. That can rise though to £600,000, I think, for a player of his quality. It's a very, very nice deal, in my opinion. I mean, he's okay. He's gone to another team who are in the same level of us now. They're around mid-table last season. But for me personally, to get half a million right now and then a little bit more in a couple potential installments and add-ons I think that's a good piece of business in my opinion I would have liked to have kept him but for the money that was on offer I think it made sense for all parties just to see him move on we also saw the departure of youngster Duck Gakpo, featured a few times towards the end of last season. He has gone out on loan, though, for the remainder of the campaign. He has gone back down into the second division. He's gone on loan to Exclesio, Exclesio Rotterdam for the remainder of the campaign, where he's played two games so far, averaged a seven rating despite not getting a goal or an assist. So fingers crossed he can start developing there nicely because that four-star potential is something that I do quite like. Another youngster who has left the club on loan is Dalton Anokpe. He has gone out on loan this time over in France. He's gone over to the National 2B so that doesn't sound like a very high standard to me he's gone over to J.A. Drancy over there as well on a deal until the end of the season he's not featured for them yet he played seven times for his last season where he scored three goals and got one assist granted they were all in the exact same game so he's gone six games without not scoring a goal but again four star potential two star credit ability certainly looks like a good player for the future and the final player to leave the club on loan is Yazine Zagari. Didn't really play too much last season. He's gone out on loan to PEC Zwallow, again, in the second division. Uh, he's played one appearance for them so far, but didn't get an average rating. So I'm going to presume he's come on off the bench. Last season for us, only featured on 14 occasions. One goal, one assist in the league. Not great, and I just feel like we could get better. Two and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential. Probably a player who's going to leave it, the football club upon the expiry of his contract in the summer. We did also see the departure of Tristan Paue. Probably, apologies if I am pronouncing his name wrong, but he's gone over to MVV again in the second division. Uh, I've never really heard of this guy before. He must have been on a non-contract or a youth contract. Never heard of him. Never going to be good enough, so we've decided to let him move on. And he's only gone there on a non-contract where he's not even getting paid. Julius Koch is another player who has left the football club. He has gone over to ADO Den Haag over in the second division. We got £215,000 for him and he didn't even play a game for us. We signed him on a free transfer, I think in January, something like that. So to move him on for over £200,000 is very nice business. And he's also only down a non-contract, so we could just go back in and sign him again. But he failed to make an appearance for us last season. We've got over £200,000 in for him. I don't really see how there's anything to complain about. That's a brilliant piece of business for a player who, to be fair, I think he's potentially is okay, but I'm still happy with that one, to be honest with you. 
Another departure saw Piotr Kestens leave the club this time on a permanent basis. He, he was on a decent amount of money for last season. He was on over a thousand pounds a week and was never really going to get into the side. We loaned him out last season to a team over in Belgium. We've sold him to another team in Belgium in the Challenger Pro League. Last season he got one assist in 25 appearances and Lommel SK have paid nearly a quarter of a million pounds for him. So I'm not going to complain with that whatsoever. Good piece of business for all parties and I'm happy he is out the door. And the final departure saw another player who was out on loan last season leave the club on a permanent transfer. This time, Mitchell Van Rosmalen has gone out on a permanent deal. £350,000. He's gone over to Belgium as well in at the Challenger Pro League. Last season, uh, we had a player, uh, he went out on loan to UNA. I don't really know what standard that is, but clearly not a good one. Seven assists, two goals in 34, averaging a 7.4 rating. He's not bad, to be honest with you, but was never really going to fit into how we were trying to play this season. We're not playing with wingers at this moment in time. As a centre mid, he wasn't very good. One of our first signings at the start of last season was Pierrick Valdivia. Now, obviously, he played 10 or 15 matches and got the extra year on his contract. We decided just to mutually terminate. We had to pay a £55,000 fee for him, but I just wanted to get him off the wage bill so we could get some other players in. Last season, he featured on 17 occasions where he got four assists, averaged just over a seven rating, but was never really going to be good enough to make that step up to the Eredivisie. At 35 years of age, I just feel like it was probably the best for all parties just to get him off the wage bill, but that's the departures done. Let's go check out some of these signings. Starting out then with the loan signing of Raymond Hendricks. He's come in on loan from Feyenoord for the remainder of the campaign. We're not really paying too much of his wages, only £350 per week. We do have a £200,000 optional future fee in there, but he spent last season out on loan at FC Utrecht where he actually failed to make any appearances. Uh, he did spend one appearance in Utrecht's second team, but clearly not good enough last season to make the step up. He looks okay though, can play left back or on the left side of a back three, which is where he's currently playing right now. Six foot. 22 years of age. I mean, he's currently on the decline, but looks like a very good player, in my opinion. Ruben Rodriguez has come in on a deal until 2026. Three year deal agreed for the former Notts County forward. Seven goals, uh, sorry, seven assists and nine goals last season in the National League. I think he looks like a very, very good player, in my opinion. He's going to be coming in and playing as a left midfielder. Can also do a job as a striker, though. So him and Rotier will be rotating between one another. 27 years of age, £4,000 a week. Looks like a very, very good player, in my opinion. Very happy with some of his statistics. We needed another centre-half, and this is, I think, my first English signing. Lewis Gibson has come in on a three-year deal. Three-and-a-half star current ability, four-and-a-half star potential, six-foot-one, left-footed centre-half, 23 years of age. He comes in on a free transfer after being released by Everton. He's had loan spells with Sheffield Wednesday, and most recently, Bristol Rovers, where he averaged a 6.73 in League One after 41 appearances. Looks like a very good player. Very happy with this. Like I say, six-foot-one, and has some decent mentals in there as well, so very happy with this piece of business already got a very very nice value as well former Preston North End central midfielder Daniel Johnson has come in on a two year contract as well £4,300 for him uh, he can play central midfield attacking midfield can even do a job out on the left if we really need him to last season for Preston averaged a 6.7 in the championship after 32 appearances he'd come in though on a free transfer provide some experience and a bit of quality in the centre of midfield I mean look at his technicals he looks like a very very good player in my opinion and the final free transfer signing is goalkeeper Luca Unbehoun. Oh, we're just going to call him Luca. There's no way I'm going to try and pronounce his second name for the remainder of his contract. Again, three-year deal agreed, £4,400 per week for him. Three-and-a-half star current ability, four-and-a-half star potential, six-foot-one. Looks like a very, very good young upcoming German goalkeeper. His goalkeeping ability looks fairly decent for this level as well. And for a goalkeeper, 11 acceleration is pretty nice in my opinion. Really, really nice value as well. Just looks like another very good goalkeeper in my opinion. And you all know how much last season I was complaining about Borgmans or Bertrams whichever one that it was the older one I think it was Bertrams has left the club Borgmans is still here as a backup but Luca looks like a very very good first choice keeper I guess only time will tell though if he is actually any decent we were unable to re-secure the services of Persin, Diaby Fadiga or Banis but we did get some strikers in through the door firstly Finn Laker Matcher what a name that was worth signing him for the name alone he's coming on a four year contract on £4,400 a week star player target man six foot two looks like a very very good player three and a half star credit ability four star potentially he's come in on a deal like I say long term contract £200,000 he's been playing over in the third division in Germany where he scored seven goals in 31 at last season he's going to be coming in playing as our central striker and we'll have two more runners that are going to play off of him probably Rotier and the other striker that we have signed the final signing for now is Ruben Messer 31 year old at Spanish striker he's come in on a three year contract on £4,400 per week £230,000 fee agreed for him he's 
come in from the Spanish Federation 1B division where he's got 15 goals last season. He might be 31, it might be a three-year deal, but looks like a very, very good player. His mental statistics and even his physicals look very, very good for a striker. Six foot, like I say, 31's obviously not ideal, but having 14 finishing, I think he's going to prove very, very good for us so far, well, for the upcoming season. And we needed to replace Banis and Diaby Fidiga, scoring th uh, 60 goals between them. I think it was over 30 goals each. We needed to replace them. I personally think the squad is in a better place than what it was at the end of last season. Like I mentioned at the end of last episode, the jump up between the top of the bottom division and the bottom of the top division is absolutely massive so we need these players to be performing we needed some quality in through the door our finances are looking very good over 1.5 million pounds in the bank still got about 3,000 2,000 pounds a week to spend in wages 200,000 pounds in at the transfer budget as well we're in a very good position at this moment in time in terms of the schedule throughout pre-season we had a 3-2 win away at Rodinghausen. We had a 2-1 defeat away at VVV Venlo, a 4-3 defeat at home to Union SG. We had a 3-0 defeat in a neutral ground against Elche, a 2-0 defeat at home to FC Twente, a 2-2 draw at home to Vitesse, a 4-0 win over Exclusio Rotterdam, a 1-1 draw away to MVV, a 6-4 win at home to SC Herenveen, a 2-2 draw at home to Sparta Rotterdam, a 3-1 win at home to Fortuna Sitted, and a 5-2 win at home to Ari Verton. In today's episode then, you will see the first game of our season at home to AZ, and then we'll just have to wait and see where we come back from after that. We might come back for maybe Willem 2 and Feyenoord, we'll just have to see how our, our season starts, because if we start off the season, lose our first six games, then I'm going to be very concerned. But this is how we're currently lining up. A genius. I don't think he's going to have it in him to replace Persin because he's just so injury prone. Every single time he plays, he seems to get some sort of a long-term injury. This time he's currently out for two months with a broken toe after having ankle ligament damage and twisted ankles, all this sort of stuff, and Achilles damage. It's just not ideal. All our centre-backs, though, seem to be left-footed. Gibson, Rigo, Segura, and Hendricks, and we've also got Janssen in there as well, all left-footed. Only Seedorf, who's not naturally a centre-half, and Giebels, who's not very good, are our centre-halves who are right-footed. So that's obviously not ideal. We need a right midfielder, because our only backup to play on the right of midfield is Dion Dorenbosch. And as much as I like him, and he's one for the future, something tells me a lot of other teams will be looking to exploit him if we start him as a right midfielder in the air divisi. Here we have it then. Here's how we line up for our first game in the air divisi at home to AZ. We've got Luca in goal, a back three of Seedorf, Rigo, and Gibson. Doran Bosch starts on the right, like I mentioned, in that position we certainly do need to be improving in. Rotier starts on the left with Johnson and Oostenbrink in the midfield. Rodriguez and Mesa as the advanced forwards with Lake and Matcher as the target forward. Our depth isn't that good, to be honest with you. So if we do start struggling defensively or in the striker department specifically, we've only got three natural strikers. Rotier can play up there. Then it's really re we are relying on youngsters. We've currently got former Coventry City forward Tyler Walker in on trial. We might start try and get him in on maybe a two-year contract, something like that, but we just can't really afford it right now. You know, with us only having £2,000 a week to spend in wages, we are in a little bit of a spot of bother in terms of trying to sign players. In terms of some squad numbers for these guys, we'll just give them some at random. It doesn't really matter all too much. In fact, Herkman's is not a player who I really plan on keeping around for too long, so he can have 49. Luca can obviously have the number one shirt. And we'll get underway for today's game. The start of a new era. The aim for this season is just to avoid relegation, but the aim last season was for a mid-table finish, and we ended up winning the league. So... Who knows? You win some, you lose some. Fingers crossed this season we finish at least fourth bottom, any lower than that, and it will obviously be a bit of a disappointing season unless we win the relegation playoff game. But we'll tell all the players we, we trust them to make the difference in today's game. Our form, obviously, there is no form because, well, we've not played any competitive matches yet. A couple of players who actually got the face packs, which have loaded, which is obviously very nice. They're going with a 4-3-3 narrow formation. Looks quite interesting, although I don't really recognise any of their players. With that Coop Miners on the bench is he not a little bit good to be playing against us i think az are one of the better sides aren't they in this league so a loss here wouldn't be the end of the world we i would still like to start off with maybe a draw messer on the ball he plays it through into lake and matcher and that is one nil not even 90 seconds on the clock. We take the lead in today's game. Rotier picks up the ball on this left side. Finds Messi, who's wearing the armband in today's game. Ball through into Lake and Matcher. And he tucks it away. The two new signings, the two players who we've paid fees for. The two strikers combine. And we take the lead with just over a minute played on the clock. Against one of the better sides in the Eredivisie. But we cannot get 
confused and think that the game's already won. We need to stay switched on for the remainder of the game and go and get another one now. Doran Bosch on the ball here. He goes into Seedorf, who did sign a new two-year contract in the summer. He was out of a deal in the summer. He was one of the few players that we actually decided to keep in the end. Rottier, though, with a shocking pass there. Gives it away in a really, really poor area. Now Petkov coming forward for the opposition here. Kirkes over on their left-hand side. Ball comes into the box. Looking for that is a brilliant ball and that is a great goal. Jesper Carlsen already has his fifth goal of the season. Is this not match day number one? How has he already scored five goals? Are they playing in some sort of competition we don't know about? I mean, that's a bit frustrating, isn't it? I mean, it's been an action-packed start to today's game. Three minutes and then it's already 1-1. It's a brilliant ball, but I just feel like we should be dealing with that better. And Lucas shouldn't really be getting be beaten from that sort of an angle. That's quite frustrating. We'll give him some encouragement, although I'm still fairly happy with the start to today's game. Seedorf going long, looking for Laker match. It doesn't get underneath that. Rodriguez picks up the ball here, looking for a ball in behind. Can we get on the end of that one, though? It is cleared away. Poor clearance on Rottier finds Messer. Ball into the box! Is that onside? It is onside. It's 2 0. It's Messi with the assist. It's Laker Matcher with the goal. Five minutes on the clock. It's SC Eindhoven 2, AZ 1. What on earth is going on in today's game? We cannot keep it up with a goal every two minutes. Messi ball in. Laker Matcher, what a player. As our new target forward. I don't usually play with target forwards, but if he's going to keep sticking him in the back of the net like that. How can I complain? We're somehow 2 and up inside five minutes. Throw in at four is here. Gibson will look down the line into Messer. Already got two assists to his name. Johnson now looking for Rottier. That pass is intercepted. Messer wins his header, but Rottier intercepts once more. Spins away from his man. Messer now. Can he get a ball in? It's deep. Looking for Dorenbosch. That is cleared away though. Oostenbrink will win that though in the midfield. Dorenbosch now into the penalty area. Can he win something here? He can't. And that ball is cleared. Only as far as Seedorf. He goes back down the line into Dorenbosch. In Inside, looking for Laker Matcher. The ball is through here into Rodriguez. And Ruben Rodriguez has his first goal for FC Eindhoven. The former Notts County front man. I was debating, do I play Rottier up front? Do I play Rodriguez? I've chosen to go with the Portuguese 27-year-old. And he's rewarded me with a goal here. I mean, I thought AZ were meant to be good. Or maybe I've just built an insane team. I'm not really too sure. Either way, it's FC Eindhoven 3 AZ1, Ruben Rodriguez getting on the act now with a brilliant strike. I mean, that is a great goal right into the top corner. Doran Bosch, to be fair, I was questioning him at the start of today's game, but he's having a good game so far. And Laker Matcher, two goals and an assist. What a signing he's looking to be. Rigo now with this free kick goes short into Oostenbrink. Seedorf picks it up off of him and he finds Rigo once more. Rigo playing in the centre does concern me a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. That is a poor pass there from Laker Matcher. Currently on an 8.8 .8 rating right now. Ryan with the ball. He's happy to come forward with it and absolutely send it over the top. Rigo misjudges it and the shot comes in. Thankfully for our sake, it goes over the bar. But like I mentioned, the problem with us having loads of left-footed centre-backs, I don't really know who to play in the middle because I love my middle centre back to be either footed but a lot of them are left only footed there's a ball he's in the box here it's really scrappy it's Rottier with a strike it's billed by the keeper that is shocking goalkeeping there Rodriguez now finds Dorenbosch into the penalty area ball across cleared away though by Bazoa I'm convinced a lot of these players are like gold on FIFA as in like their ultimate team card is gold where a lot of our players will probably be bronze or even silver. There you go. Half time. FC Eindhoven 3 AZ1. You are doing brilliantly. Keep going. I cannot complain about anyone's performance in that first half. Brilliant first half. Let's get on the way for the second and hope for more of the same. Doran Bosch picks it up on this right hand side. Driving forward into a little bit of space. Allowed to get to the byline here. Cut ball cuts back and Ryan I mean this man has not got a clue what he's doing here does he? Did the goal referee signal for a goal kick there? I'm not really too sure what's going on. We've got a corner. Evan Rottier will swing this one in. Right foot out swinger towards the front post. Cleared away though by Bazoen. Seedorf gets on the second ball and that is the end of the highlight there. We need to keep getting at them in this second half. Whoever gets the next goal here it's certainly going to be a very important one. They want us to change up the tactics slightly. I am not going to do that. Free kick for us here which we'll see Danny Johnson on the ball. I hope he wants me to call him Danny not Daniel every time. Ball in looking for Seedorf. Cleared away though. Only as far as Daniel Johnson into the penalty area here. Can he get a ball across? There's loads of him queuing up. Rigo with a header and somehow it's not four. 
A free kick is given because Danny Johnson is offside. I'm not really too sure how we've not scored there. We will now look to make some substitutions. I don't want to change too much, but we do have some tired legs out there as of right now. So Hendricks is going to come on for Gibson as our left-sided centre-half. Rottier is not having a great game, so we're going to bring on Mateus. But Goers actually is going to come on. He's not actually on a contract with us right now. He's, uh, he's on like one of them when the contract expires and then they're on like a... £200 a week sort of deal until they decide to leave or we decide to actually offer them a proper contract. Apart from that, I'm just going to make the two changes for now because everyone else is either playing well or not really tired enough. We'll get underway for another five minutes or so, then we might make some more changes. Seed off with the ball here. The substitution's yet to come onto the pitch yet. Rodriguez gives it away, though, in a really, really poor area. And now AZ coming forward. Can they capitalise on our mistake? Forced quite wide there. And it's a pretty comfortable save in the end for our German goalkeeper. And that will be the end of the highlight. In terms of some other substitutions, I mean, I'd love to change to midfield, but both of them are playing really well, aren't they? 20 minutes to go. We will now make the rest of our substitutions. Doran Bosch is not having a great game, so he's going to come off for Mateus get Mateus an opportunity on that right hand side to play as an inverted winger Ooston Brink I would like to bring off potentially or maybe we get Van Dorm on for Danny Johnson and go a little bit more defensive play Van Dorm as more of a ball winning midfielder and just to try and combat them a bit more in that midfield final change of today's game we are going to bring on we're going to bring on G-Bells for seed off and hopefully he can put in a good performance to see the game out. 20 minutes to go. We're currently winning 3-1. Hopefully what I've done there is not going to affect it too much. Odegaard coming forward here. That is an interesting backwards pass. It's now with Sugawara. What a name that is. Maybe we need to sign him for the name alone there. Rigo clears on this occasion. Now Bagoas, he finds Messer. A little bit of space for him to drive into here. We've got a 3-on-3 three -three, really. Ball out wide into Bagoas. More of a defensive left midfielder rather than an attacking one. But ball through into Messer who unfortunately is offside. AZ coming forward at down at their right hand side ball clipped in towards the edge of the box good header though from Mateus who will hopefully get some more minutes this season Kirkes now shoots from distance will take that all day long well over the bar 10 minutes left on the clock it's FC Eindhoven 3 AZ will not a lot's really happen in the second half after an action packed first half as they've scored is that offside? It is offside. They've hit the post or crossbar and they have scored a tap in they're still celebrating the referee has certainly already disallowed it though is there VAR? Oh, there is VAR. I didn't even know we had VAR in the air of Izzy. And the goal has been disallowed. Lovely stuff. Five minutes to go to see this game out. I think I'm just going to tell them to time waste a little bit though now. Corner ball here for AZ. They're certainly in a rush to get this one into the box. Messer should get a little bit more of a clearance on that one. And now it's with Mahalovojevic. Kodosa now finds Reese. Ball over the top looking for Odegaard. Can we get there to stop the ball into the box? We can't. And now Classy has loads of room here. Lays it off. Shot on the edge of the box. And I'm not even going to try and pronounce his first name. Mihalovojevic has scored. There's two minutes left. Um, is it time we just go defensive and park the bus maybe? Oh, I'm really not going to enjoy these last two minutes. I mean, they've got loads of room on the edge of the area there. That's quite frustrating that they've been allowed to lay it off like that. And it's a great strike from Mihalovoj... Mihalovic? Yeah, it's not Maloyevic, but either way, four minutes added on at the end of today's game. There's another highlight. Oh, I really can't watch this. Kirkes coming forward. Brilliant defending, though, from Rodriguez. Our strikers tracked all the way back there to pretty much right back to win the ball back. And that is a brilliant header from our target man, Laker Matcha. Rodriguez looking over the top. Is it a chance for the hat trick? Oh, what a save that is from the keeper. Laker Matcha has had an absolutely fantastic debut. Really, really impressed with what I've seen from him in today's game. Van Dorm will take his time though with this set piece we are more than happy to run the clock down 60 seconds left on the clock ball is deep looking for Messer cleared away though by Decker only as far as Hendricks who on earth is Hendricks I have no idea who that is we don't have a player called Hendricks Van Dorm now he picks up the ball here oh we do have a player called Hendricks that's our left-sided center half yes the man on loan from Feyenoord that's the one G-Bells now passing it around the back are we just going to see 40 seconds of us playing it around the back here that's kind of what I expect will happen and I was right, that is pretty much what has happened. We have passed it around the back, kept the ball very nicely. Question marks, that ball has gone out of play. There is the full-time whistle. We start out our Air Divisi campaign with a 3-2 win at home to one of the better teams in the league. We'll have a look at what the media prediction was at the start of the season for where they need to, or where they expect the opposition to be finishing because I thought they were comfortably a top six side at this level. I'm looking at some of the options that are in here. Obviously, you've got Ajax, Feyenoord, and I'd probably say FC 20, I'd say, probably up there. FC Grongin, obviously, you've got PSV as well. SC Heravine, Vitesse, maybe. 
Utrecht potentially as well, but AZ is certainly a top six, top eight side, in my opinion. Maybe I've got that one wrong. Let's have a look at the air visit season preview. And how do you get up season preview here? AZ, yeah, they're, pre they're predicted to finish fourth. They're 11 to 1 to win the league. I mean, look at us, we're 800 to 1 to win the league. They expect us to finish rock bottom this season. So we need to go out and prove everybody wrong. And I've been in management for a year and 48 days. That's very nice, isn't it? But anyway, that is where I'm going to leave it for today's video. If you have enjoyed today's transfer special, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 25 likes, as I said at the start of today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 700 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts as well down in the comment section down below to help boost the video in the YouTube algorithm. We've had an offer here for Mateus. He is going absolutely nowhere. Let me know down in the comment section down below, out of all these signings that I've made, which one has been your favourite or will be, hopefully, your favourite as well. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all very soon for another one. Peace.